Hey guys, this is Kirob speaking and today we are back in automation with the Ellisbury update and what I'm going to start today is a campaign playthrough. A full one this time around after our little test game starting Pur in Achana. If you haven't seen that yet, please check it out. It was quite a fun little start to a series in um, rather peculiar situations with minus two tech pool and <laughs> well, uh, not, not, not much market there for us to be had. But anyway, what we are going to tackle is a weird little challenge. You know how Gasmians love massive engines, just like Murica, and nothing below five liter is even considered adequate. Well, you have seen the thumbnail. What we are going to do today is start a company focused entirely on Gasmian key cars. And make no mistake, what we are going to do here is not a uh, super high production value, a nicely worked out playthrough. No, it is part of me testing the game. But this time around, like I said, a full playthrough. So what we're going to do is start a new game here. And that's also why I'm not on camera, it makes editing quite a bit easier. Uh, anyway, uh, we are going to start in Gasmir with Tiny Motors Inc. I'll use the insane preset and then make it a little less hardcore, or is it? No, a little more hardcore. Because what I'm aiming for is, in fact, a start with a 10x. I think that will be just fine. We're going to run 100% uh, competition. And that is for me to make good value judgments or be able to make good value judgments on their quality. Uh, and then what we are going to do is start with outer plus 50 million and we are <laughs> well um, you know what I should probably put our rule set on screen right now because uh, it is a little let's say challenging to be a Gasmian and uh, be into these cars <laughs> uh, as you can see we are starting out with only being able to supposedly 150 cc but we are going to scrap that because from 1951 onwards 360 cc was the norm so we're going to skip those very early days of the key cars and um, just jump into the rule of 360 cc maximum engine size and then that is lasting till bleh, 1976 then we are going to get a big upgrade. We are <laughs> we are going large, uh, 550 cc, and also that is the time where turbos start to kick in. So uh, I think uh, what we are going to do here, if you take a look, is uh, put a little bit into aspiration. Yes, <laughs> a little turbocharged. Yeah, um, this will be the era of our company. Hopefully, if we survive until then, uh, the era of our company becoming a sports car manufacturer <laughs> with massively overcharged uh, overcharged turbocharged um, little 550 cc engines this is going to be fun uh, and then we hit the 90s and the 90s is what brings back the standard it is 660 cc but we have a maximum power of 47 kilowatts Oh my god. Oh, 63 horsepower. Oh, we're going to aim for that. Um, also, forget about the car size requirements. We're going to build small cars, of course. We have tiny engines. Um, but uh, I'm not going to keep track of that because automation doesn't natively feature uh, key cars. So some might fall into this category, others won't. Anyway, uh, we do have a little bit more to spend on our 10x run and I think what this is going to be you know if you are so damn slow with your tiny little engines you might want to consider some aerodynamics to speed you up um, and also this is going to make us a bit more yeah uh, sl slippery in the fuel economy department and thus also emissions I think emissions on the other hand will be uh, quite disappointingly easy <laughs> with cars like these but we shall see our cars will not only be powerless they will also be weightless 
So, uh, yeah, this is going to be fun. Anyway, I think this is a good starting setup. Or, well, we shall see if it is, if we even survive this first episode. And we get started with Tiny Motors Inc. Enjoy! Congratulations on starting Tiny Motors Incorporated. Your family connection has granted you a dealership level of zero. Thanks, fam. Uh, once again. So, uh, we go right here. Select the target demographic. <laughs> well, problem being... <laughs> look at this. Uh, there are no city cars. Uh, city cars appear in Gazmir in 1955. Oh, yes. And Fruinia unlocks first in 1970. That will likely be one of our largest markets. So we're a bit stuck here before then. We do have the city car demographic in Hedvesia, and it is reasonably strong. So I think we are going to be a bit of an export company to start with. That's a decent segment to aim at. And we're going to go full manual, of course. Ah, the tech pool. Yes, this is the opposite of what we had in Ahana. We have unlocked all the cars up to 1948, because we have a native plus two tech pool. Uh, wait, 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 wait a sec. I think we, for the first time, have to use this slider. So I think 2.3, yeah, I think that's fair, right? 2.3 meter wheelbase being the maximum we are allowed throughout the run. Yeah, yeah, that's about right. Hmm, here we do have a two door sedan. Maximum seats, are you crazy? You want to six, six, six people in there? <laughs> what? Okay, we're going to take this one. This is amazing. <laughs> I This is... Do, do you remember in um, uh, Baldur's Gate, the first one, introduced the bag of holding? I think I think this... We, we found it. We found the bag of holding. It's a 1947 sedan. And, unfortunately, we are starting in Gazmir, who are experts at steel production. <laughs> well, too bad. Can't use this. So, uh, also, too bad. I don't, don't know. Should we, should we go for rear engine? Maybe, but that forces us into using space frame, and we do have zero familiarity with space frame, and it takes a lot of production units. It would be enticing, though. Uh, I do have on my to-do list thingy, or the team has rather. I'm not really involved in this. Um, a to-do list, the uh, change that leather chassis also are allowed to have rear engine. That would make it quite a bit better. Uh, otherwise, I, I would definitely go for ladder here, because space frame. We, we don't need the stiffness in this thing. But um, I, I guess, should we go front engine then? Makes the car so damn heavy, though. Uh, well, let, let's go space frame. Let's go super... Uh, s super what? Super stiff and tiny, like a little race car. We can make a sporty version of this, of course, but um, Ferenia isn't open, so no one will buy it. Uh, let's see. Engine placement, uh, rear longitudinal. There we go. And we're going cheap, real cheap. McPherson, McPherson. And mm, nah, no, I'm going to leave it right there. So basically a negative two quality could even go with minus one yeah i think i'm going to go with minus one the engineering time wants to be killed 36 months plenty now we're creating a new engine yes this needs to be uh what does it that <laughs> this can be the engine that lasts us until we go 550 or at least the family that lasts us until we go 550 so we want to make it tiny but we probably need to uh, go tiny, 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 as in set it to the minimum and then de-bore and de-stroke in order to even be this tiny. <laughs> I don't quite know, but uh, we, we shall find out. So the um, family is uh, the, the, the tiny i3, because otherwise we don't even don't even get to those tiny levels that we require. Tiny i3. Uh, this is the 360. All right, let's build a huge engine. Huge in terms of something, which I don't know yet. Maybe it will be huge in some capacity. No, not in the capacity. Oh, oh, look, we have to make it larger. Wow. 
didn't expect that. So we can probably get away with just using stroke for that. Uh, yes, easily. I mean, a stroke of 61.2, that's... <laughs> It's not worrying me in any in any way. That also means that we might get some more down low performance. This will be an issue with these um, because, well, they need to, to rev to infinity in order to generate any power. On the other hand, again, they can rev to infinity to generate the power. And I think we're going to use that juicy familiarity and make a push rod engine. <laughs> Pushrod engine revving to infinity, that is even better than uh, anything else. And oh, of course, that allows us to uh, up the quality of this one significantly because we have such high familiarity. And that will make the engine quite reasonable, he says. Famous last words. I don't think we need any heavy duty stuff here, so cast like. Ah. Uh... We might need cast pistons just for the energy density. Uh, le let's try these out first, though. Do we want to engineer into it balance shafts? I think the answer is... Uh, maybe. <laughs> uh, we want to keep it lightweight. These lower reliability as well. I think this is something we keep in mind for later models. Where we have turbochargers and shit, we can slap those on. It doesn't matter because who cares about a kilowatt when you make hundred? Um, hmm. Balancing mass. That's kind of sporty. Probably need a bit more for an i3. Like the the explosions happen so far in between that you can go drink coffee before the next explosion starts, and that quite rattles you. So uh, yes, uh, quality. Do we need any? Yeah, I mean. It's not too expensive, but then again, it doesn't really matter. Let's leave it there, and we probably can run on 98, right? So, uh, <laughs> does that seem high? Like 9.2 or so? Eh, something. Um, mm, we do need to rev it to get any kind of power. So at least a cam profile of 40, I would think. Uh, springs and lifters. Even though it's pushrod, probably not needed that much because we're running a 50 bore. It's tiny. And RPM limit. Yeah, I mean, 6.5 should be easy. Uh, quality. Do we need it? Maybe. Maybe not. Uh, naturally aspirated. No choice there. Ah, we already have plus four. Beautiful. But here, yeah, a single eco carb because this thing is going to lack so much power down low. You need to make it up for in some regard, and especially off throttle or um, lower throttle settings and lower RPM. The single barrel eco carb is quite superior to the single barrel carb um, because it's self regulating in a better fashion, but then again, less reliable and doesn't flow all too well. Does it matter? No, not really. Although we have a tiny bore compared to stroke, so maybe. Oh, you know what? What I just recognize is our bore to stroke ratio is actually quite extreme. We're running a 1.2 to 1 setup. Aren't we? Yeah. Yeah, look at this. I mean, <laughs> this is, if you're dealing with such small numbers, then a small difference is a large percentage, right? So this is, uh, if you take it to 100 space value, this would be 122.4. Yeah, that's big. 22.4% 20, larger. And, ooh, that's an interesting choice now. So, if we were to tune the engine for low RPM, I don't think it will make any power whatsoever. So, the only real option we have here is to go for the mid. Yes. Um, let's give it one margin. Fuel map. I think we can run a little ridge, otherwise we're not going to make any power. And this is important. Yes, yes, yes. 14? It's not too bad. 17, maybe? Let's try 17.5 months here. Higher quality fuel system means a lot more reliability. And reliability is good. There's a bug currently in, in the game making reliability too important. That will likely be fixed very soon. I found the... Um, I found a reproducible case, so... 
That's uh, it's probably about twice as important as it's intended to be. So, but yeah, uh, this will be fixed during this let's play. <laughs> I can't bank on the fact that I'm just going to roll through with all my beautiful uh, reliability. That then, do oh my god, that then doesn't matter. We are making a fantastic 13.6 <laughs> horsepower. And uh, our engine wants to uh, melt itself as well. Um, we can rev to 8.2k. But we're gonna... Oh man, this is bad. Oh. So we do need the quality there. We do need to up this. 14, 15, 17. Yeah, this makes it slightly better. Only 4%. This makes me want to go a little richer because that reduces the reliability penalty. Uh, this is an issue with spot heating in the cylinder. And, of course, a richer mixture makes the burn cooler, which reduces hot spots and thus increases reliability. But this also means that we are nowhere near as efficient. <laughs> 5%? <sighs> yeah, what are you supposed to do? Uh, but I think the flow of this engine is probably completely whacked out. Let's Oh my god. Yes, it is. So first, exhausts to zero. Uh, that helped. But now we need to fix the others. So that is the carb. The carb needs to come down. Oh uh, no, up in size. Uh, it's strangling. Strangling us. Not too much. I want to strangle a little bit. I need more down low power. So I think I'm going to aim for somewhere there between 110 and 115%. Uh, manifold. That needs to come up. Mm, yeah, yeah, not too, f not too far. I see it reduce our max power. We are going to run this thing on max power basically all the time, and then we need to definitely shrink down the size of the headers. That will help a lot. Oh, look at that beautiful resonance coming through. Um, somewhere there. Also, we can give it a little quality. So this is just 8.75 engineering times. Okay, all good. Yeah, I think we're set up here. No, wait a sec. This isn't quite right yet. Only negative 0.2%. It's not enough, so let's up this to... till we see the yellow appear. There. Beautiful. Now we've reached the fantastic heights of 7% engine efficiency. Oh yes, body quality. So important, especially while the reliability bug is active. Let's make use of this. Um, I, I would otherwise as well, because this is... Yeah, for a few production units, this gives a fair amount of stats, so always consider those. And now, rear wheel drive. Three gears should be enough. And two... <laughs> 260! That is something for 1976, you know. Um, but I think we are going to go with just about 100, 110k. We need a little bit of overdrive, you know. A little bit of overdrive to to make this thing more reasonable. Uh, this is a ratio of 3.2, roughly. So um, I'm going to use this and then a little lower spread. Open locker... And we go with hard long life. Hmm. Huh. That's a decent size for the tires. That is a very decent size for the tires. We don't need much brakes because this thing won't weigh anything. So let's go with 620. 110, so we can make this even larger. Can put 50. Wow! Prestigious! Because we don't need the tire width, friend. This is. Minimum with fifth. I've I've never seen numbers this low. Okay, in the rear it's 120. So okay, that's fair enough. Uh, oh yeah, rear engine. Oh shit. We might want to actually reduce this in the front, which allows us even larger brakes. But does it make it too expensive? Is the question. Combined material costs. Ooh, that is more expensive. Also looks weird as shit, but. <laughs> What are you supposed to do? Uh, just run tiny tires in the front. Let's see if we can tune it out with... 
Now, do we want to tune it out with tow? We can So, okay, the problem here is we have a rear engine. We'll be very rear happy, very oversteery, and very little grip on the front. Um, no. Well, kind of. At the same time, yes. There's no weight on the front, but the tires are more than adequate for the front because they are not loaded at all. So they, they grip nicely for the little weight there, there is. Um, and it, that means I will need to reduce the front size so that we don't oversteer like crazy. But that means that we are paying a higher price for the tires, which isn't too bad, really. Um, or we leave it like this and have to use a lot of tow. Tow in, to be exact. And a lot of tow, probably on the order of half a degree, uh, both back and front. And that will kick your nuts in terms of fuel economy. So yes, let me try out this beautiful setup. That the tires look adequate. It's about bicycle, uh, bicycle, <laughs> bicycle esque size, and in the rear we have massive drag slicks, as you can see. That's perfect. The total costs aren't too bad. Three hundred bucks. I mean, that's fair enough. Uh, if we go for medium, we would sacrifice a little bit of top speed as well as uh, fuel economy but we would gain comfort and that might not be the worst of ideas but I'm going to in Gasmia no one cares about fuel, fuel costs at the moment so yeah we're not a bit in the wrong niche for the country and uh, I don't think we are going to need any brakes at all basically it's it's feet feet are enough um, do we need more than 160 this is rear engine, so we probably, probably about right for where we are here. I just limit the brake force some more and drop this one down to like 25, and we shall see where we are. This is insane. Like usually, you run into problems where you can't fit brakes large enough. This will be the opposite. No under tray needed. Uh, cooling. Don't want to overdo it because we are going to be dog slow. So uh, I'm going to aim for a factor two a little bit more we can do diminishing returns on this slider so all the way at the top we are at 4.7 but um 60 percent up there we are already 2.6 and down here it's one we do have six quality to use in uh, in our engineering efforts um that is massive that is massive Production units can be lowered, but I don't want to. Let's go with a plus six, yeah. So this is going to be quite aerodynamic indeed. Um, let's see what we do for the interior. How are you? No! <laughs> don't make it a family, Kika. This is insane. Okay, but it's superb that we do have the option. Because that means we can go into the family segments and we can go into the city segments. We make a, uh, a five-seater. I, I don't know. We, we can't sell it in Gasmia, let's be honest. I mean, the obesity rates are through the roof. <laughs> not, not in 1946 just yet, but uh, they will be. So maybe this is our last chance to sell a five-seater of that size in Gasmia, because otherwise they, they will be fitting two people in there instead of five. Now the interior question. That's an interesting one too. I don't think we can go too low, make it too cheap. Because we are very, very small production at the moment. I don't want to go for production flags like luxury here. Let's make it normal. And then, uh, does this actually take... No, it doesn't take tech pool. Okay, so this is unlocked, the premium radio. And I could add two as well to make it better. That is a lot of engineering time. I think it's worth it. Uh, oh, how much is this? 811. Now ah, that's a little steep. That's a little steep. Okay, let's go for the premium radio. Manual rack and pinion because we have no weight on the front whatsoever. This is this will feel like the best electric, uh, advanced electric power steering from modern cars. Put in this one because it's basically a go kart. Although having driven a go-kart the steering tends to be pretty awful <laughs> it's so so heavy 
But um, let's see. Safety. Ooh. Well, safety is a problem. Advanced 40s, yes. But I think what I'm going to do is keep it at zero. Our tuning for the tires isn't far off. We need to drop it a little longer. But first, let's finish this up with uh, its setup. That that doesn't look good, does it? But we can, if we take, no, okay. We're going to aim for whatever, <laughs> like anything that it is is not red. Um, but yeah, there's a lot more optimization to do. Let's make it heavier, a little bit more insulated. Is this just making it worse? It is. Okay. Well, uh, I guess we're fucked then. So, nothing to choose there, but that's a race car at the moment. That's a, that's a high downforce race car with this roll angle. Um, I think I have to tune all of them for sport, basically. It's our drivability setup. Um, because otherwise we don't have any load capacity. What is this? Two Gasmians? Alright. We need to make the front smaller. And even smaller? Uh, that was overshooting it a bit. Yeah. I think this is about where we want to end up. For the uh, for the size there. Now, a little bit of toe never hurts. And that is the perfect setup already. Hmm. So, uh, just to note this again, this is something that has changed with the Ellisbury update. I think that's a quite a cool change actually, plays really well. Uh, the drivability and sportiness markers have switched position. So you can now basically tune for sportiness and drivability at the same time. Or choose which one you prefer and still have a decent compromise. Let's make it a bit softer. Right there, there. That is looking better. But 3.6, oh, well, okay, we still have sway bars to the wazoo. Uh, no. Now we don't. And we are getting to normal-ish roll angles. Oh, we are already at zero. Okay, no sway bars for you. The off-road community is delighted. All right. Hatchback body. Yeah. But let's optimize the car first. Uh, I was looking at the city demographic here, and they do want their hatchback. Do we have a hatchback? Yes, indeed we do. And it does have the same configuration. Uh, should we go for that? No, because this is our family car, right? For the um, for the city car, we're going for the hatchback. So gearing, okay. Reliability, no problem. We don't see the the <laughs> limit line. <laughs> we don't we don't know what torque is. Oh wow, the total ratio was hit exactly there. Ooh, yep. Um. So, do I need to further up the first gear? Because that's the only gear where we have any kind of acceleration. Yeah, a little bit helps. Up to 35. And if I reduce the gearing top speed, I gain a fair amount of stats minus uh, the fuel economy. That is looking pretty poor. So I, I believe this is a reasonable compromise. 5.3 liters per 100k and 44.4. That's that's not a high drivability rating. Let's check out our traction tests. Yeah, it's all green. <laughs> Who would have thought? Uh, it's pr it can probably flawed while I'm being on ice and it will grip even though you have like no profile left. Uh, but duh, <laughs> ice doesn't need profile, but yeah. You get what I was saying, like snow. Uh, yeah, it actually thinks that it's pretty solid. Oof, brakes can be optimized for sure. We do have a little bit of front brake fade and utility. Going to get partially rid of that and lower the force there. And then in the rear we have zero everywhere. We just need more force here. Something like this, keep it balanced, and there we have a nice boost in drivability. Uh, pad type, where's the inflection point really? I think it's 25. And then, yeah, it goes goes down further. Yep, that's all good. Uh, we are spot on there. Now, aerodynamics, 
don't need to do anything. How fast is this car without the arrow? 82.0 kilometers now versus um, Ahana levels. <laughs> Let's check. How fast would this be in Ahana? Okay. Uh, it's not too bad. 76 though. Uh, to me, that means that we probably get away with plus 5 pretty easily. And that will set us at, yeah, just 0.2 kilometers an hour. That's fine. Oh, look how cheap it is. Beautiful. Re-optimized it. It is ready to go. Let's make some quick variants. Um, I didn't mean variants. I meant trims. And a quick clone later. We are going to make the city version of this one. Where the only real change might have to be in the body, as well as in the seating arrangement. Because we don't need these seats in the rear. And... <coughs> what?! <laughs> okay, that's quite impressive. Uh, that's a big stat gain, because there's no damn room in this thing. So, anything that you do to it to give a little bit more breathing room will drastically increase your stats. Oh! This is almost a race version of the car, so let's quickly check out its uh, demolishing of the track record for K cars in 1946. And it is rather slow. Ah, it's not too bad, just over four minutes. There is a commuter segment that is uh, catering to four seaters, of course. So for commuter segment is four to five seats. Family is five to nine. We went with five seats for this one. If we wanted to aim for the commuter category only, we could try four seats. But uh, I'm, I'm not sure if they will love that. Uh, let's have a quick look though. Oh, we go in here, interior, and how are the stats? Uh, it's not that much better. No. Nah, nah, that's also catered to the family market. And we will get a few sales. Are we going to start out of a tiny factory or small factory? Small factory, right? If that is so. And we're going to produce the engine with a contract factory, because we can't afford anything else, then we might as well have three different trims. Is there a market for fun cars? Sports cars? Not really, no. <laughs> okay, uh, we, we might be able to get into this segment at some point, but no one in Gazmir or Hedvesia is in any way interested in this shit. So uh, we're out of luck there. Oh, we could make a tiny delivery keycar. Your little pizza van. Do we have a... We do have a van. How does... Wait a sec. How does this even work with the rear engine? Well, I don't, I don't care. It's, it's a perfect... Oh, well, it's, I guess it's so tiny. It's like... Where, where others have their exhausts, that's basically where we have gearbox and engine combined in that same space. So, uh, uh, that, 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 I can't, can't argue against that. Uh, this is not compatible to being a uh, vehicle for disposal of dead bodies, because they are way too long. Or tend to be. And way too wide in Gazmir, too. There we go. Light delivery it is. They are all green. They have never seen a vehicle this fortuitous. Uh, the, come on, can I? Can I? No. No, I can't. Morphing enabled. We can make it. Oh, oh man! Now it's massive. Let's let's go with this. And uh, come on, come on. I can I can grab it there. Whoa. This is this is going to have room for at least half a cubic meter. And for you Americans out there, that's how much? Like five and a half cubic feet or something? <laughs> no, wait, four and a half. And this is looking pretty solid, I would say. We have the delivery, the family, and the city. City is not doing too well. 
but it might grab some more share in Hitvesia, like this. So you see there, it has a little bit in the commuter even, even though the seating count is wrong. And because of no sway bars, <laughs> you even sell something into the off-road market. And in Gazmir, without the city segments, we are looking at a pretty reasonable distribution as well. And something that scares me is how many cars we're supposedly selling at just 3% awareness. So I was thinking about small things. Like, no, not what I have in my pants, but rather what we could name this thing. It is a tiny car, or three tiny variants of a car, trims even, and I like tits, especially blue tits. They're kind of cute. So um, how about we call this the tit? And there comes another tit delivery to you. <laughs> there we go. I think that will fit just fine. Ooh, wow. This is looking juicy. Only 13 months of engineering time. And our engine has a default of 17. That means we can get this thing out real quick without sacrificing too much reliability. So if we up this slightly, so to, oh well, slightly, that's already quite massive, and reduce the tooling slightly, uh, maybe not quite as much. Maybe, can we get it down to like nine months or so? So I do want to reduce, how much money is this? This is not much. Could reduce the pressure to make it even more reliable. 65, that's good. That's really looking solid. Production units, so it's going to be quite a bit more expensive due to the, our settings here, especially this one. Um, expensive to make, but I mean, getting it out that much faster is worth quite a bit. The distribution here looks very solid as well. Uh, 16 months. We can go down to, oh yeah, yeah there we have it. Um, well below the nine months there and we can go up a little here and nah. What, 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 wait a sec, there, there we have it. And this, yes, nine months there as well, perfect. Depending on how quick we are going to grow, I might make a sporty version as well. Then we can make sports cars that no one buys. Isn't that fun? No, it's not a fun car. It's a sports car. It's a track car. A track key car. And I think this is a good place to end it. We have today thoroughly designed and went through all the uh, relevant compromises of making a car like this in the early days. And they seem to be supposedly selling we don't know yet we shall find out in the next episode and i have to ask you especially for this first episode to like it if you did because that really spreads the word around this for the series to other people who might be enjoying this kind of content thank you very much and i shall see you guys next time